Hey, how's it going? My name is Dustin Hudson, and today I'm going to be showing you a quick tip in the plugin Element 3D. Now, if we take a look at our example, we can see that we have a very simple logo. There's some texture on the sides, but more specifically, there's a texture of the logo that lines up perfectly with the geometry on the face of this object. And that's what we're going to be going over. And more specifically, we're going to go over this function in the scene setup called Use Layer as UV. And if we scroll down on our material settings, it is right here, Use Layer as UV. And actually, if you hover your mouse over it, there's a little tip of what it actually does. And this is something that can be really helpful when you have to line up textures or images to the face of a model. It's simple to use and it's fast to set up, but there's a couple key things that you have to get right for it to work. So to begin this, we're going to start in Illustrator. And what we're going to do is going to bring our vector graphic into Illustrator first. And uh, I actually have another tutorial on my channel that goes a little bit more into extruding from a vector. And there's some troubleshooting tips in there. So if you want to get more in depth into that, there's that one. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually just drag this into Illustrator. And I'm going to minimize that. And you can see that the canvas is huge. And this doesn't quite matter, but I know the resolution of my comp, and it's 720 by 1280. So I'm just going to go Edit, Copy. And now I'm going to make a new document. So Control New. And it's already set up from last time, so I'm just going to keep it. So 720 by 1280. And you don't have to do that, but it can help with lining things up in a minute here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Edit Paste. And now we're back in here. And it's really small, so I'm just going to scale it up. No rhyme or reason here, just scaling. And this part isn't necessary either, but it'll definitely help in a minute here. If you go to Window and you go to Align, this will help center your object. What we're going to be doing is taking our vector, pasting it in After Effects, and extruding it, and then mapping the face of this thing to the geometry, and it helps if it's all lined up. You'll see here in a minute. And before we actually do that, one thing to note is you want to make sure that your objects are grouped before you try to center them. So I'm actually going to delete this. And then I'm going to go back and select my layer. And I'm going to go to Edit, and then Copy, and go to my new one, go to Edit, and Paste. And now it is grouped. If it's not already grouped, you're going to have to do that. So I'm going to scale this up again. And I'm actually going to scale it a little bit bigger, just because it's 720p and you want to get as much texture resolution out of it, because you're eventually going to use this as the texture. So I've got that. And now I'm going to align this thing. So we can use this horizontal align center, and we can also use this vertical align center, and that'll just sort of set it to the middle, and we should be okay. So our first goal right now is to just extrude the basic shape of this. So what I'm going to do is actually save a version of this just with the outline. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I already have one made, so I'm just going to save over that one. Just hit OK. Just hit OK. And now I'm going to save another version of this. I'm going to close out these other ones. Those were just my test ones. And I'm going to save as. And I'm just going to call this main body. Save. Hit OK. Now what I want to do is just go ahead and delete all the stuff that I don't need. So I can just go through this and just sort of delete everything. So now we've deleted all the detail out of this thing and all we have is the basic outline. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select that and we're gonna go to Edit, Copy, and then we're gonna go back to After Effects. And I'm gonna go ahead and make a new comp and I'm gonna use the keyboard shortcuts, Control N. And like I said, for this tutorial, I'm working at 720p, so that's okay for what I'm doing right now. I'm just going to hit OK. And then I'm going to hit Control y and that's going to create a new solid. And I'm going to go ahead and edit, paste. All right, so that should paste it right in the middle. All right, now we're going to go back to Illustrator real quick. And we're just going to go to File, open the project that we just had a second ago, the one with the full vector. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to end up saving this as a JPEG that we can use as a texture. Before we do that, we're actually going to take a box and just create a background real quick. And what you want to make sure is there's no stroke outline on this so that it doesn't create extra pixels. And so what you can do is just drag it out, 
and let go and then just drag this thing to the bottom and it doesn't have any color it doesn't have any outline but it's just to export a background for this thing so we're going to go ahead and go to file export and i'm going to go ahead and save over this one For me, for some reason, this was defaulted at 5, so if you want to turn it up to 10 for better quality, go for it. Hit OK. So now that we're pretty much done with Illustrator, let's head back into After Effects. Go ahead and double click in the project area and just import your image. And just drag that to your comp. And if we toggle these on and off, we can see that the positioning is identical between the two layers. So let's go ahead and set up our element layer. Go to Layer, New, Solid. Hit OK. Go to Effect, Video Copilot, Element. Now if we go to the Custom Layers drop-down, and then go to Custom Text and Masks, we can go ahead and select our layer that has the mask on it. So Black Solid 5 has our mask on it. You can go ahead and click Black Solid 5. Go to our Scene Setup, hit Extrude, and you can see that extrude the outline of our logo quite nicely. Now, like I said, if you're running into problems where it seems like parts of the logo are missing or there's holes or it looks like geometry is missing, check out that other video that's on my channel. There's a couple of more troubleshooting tips in that one. It goes into it a little bit more. And then what we can do is we can go to extrude and just sort of bulk it up a bit. And there's a bunch of different options down here for changing bevel size and things like that. And before we hit OK, and this isn't necessary, I'm going to go to the model options. And I'm actually just going to turn on normalized size for now. This isn't something that you have to do, but just for the sake of this tutorial, it's going to scale down my model so you can see it right away. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off these two layers. And now I want to map our texture to the face of this object. And just to get a sense of that this is 3D, I'm just going to create a camera. Hit OK. I'm going to hit C. And that brings up the camera control. And if you hit C again, it brings up more controls. I'm just going to rotate it real quick. So if I go back to Element, go to Custom Layers and then go to custom texture maps, I can load in our texture. So that's our bottom one. Now here's where we're going to see the convenience of already having our logo scaled and centered in Illustrator to fit our comp. Now again, if we just look at this real quick, you can see that the mask layer lines up perfectly with the texture. And our texture is the size of our comp. All right, so we've got our texture loaded into the custom texture map slot. Let's go back into the scene setup. So if we go ahead and select our material, we go down to the diffuse, and where it says none set in this slot area, we can click on it and under this arrow, we can choose our custom layer. So if we click on it, we can see that our texture has been mapped, but it doesn't look good. It's not lined up. So I'm just going to, I'll pull this up real quick. I'm just going to hit okay. And what we're going to do is I'm going to hit this use layer as UV. And what this is going to do, well, I'll just click on it. So just go ahead and click on it. And as you can see, it has taken the position of our mask and mapped the texture below it. So it lines up with all these edges perfectly, and it's mapped directly to the front. If we hit OK, we can see that it is 3D. We can rotate around it. And there was no tricky UV mapping or anything like that. So one of the tricks of this was having the mask already centered and the logo already centered so that they could line up on top of each other perfectly right off the bat. But if you couldn't do that, you could also pre-comp your image. So if we went to Layer, Pre-Compose, move all attributes, and hit OK. We can also use this pre-composition as the source of the layer. So if we were to go into this thing, and maybe I just take a texture from somewhere, and just open it, and if I was to bring it out here, and this is a terrible example, but if I was just, but if I were to set it to like a screen mode or something, maybe multiply, it would update in here. And you can go ahead and just turn that off. So this is a really easy way to just map your logo to your model. Now there's a couple limitations as you can see from this. If I were to go into the scene setup with that texture setup, you can see that it stretches the sides and also it flips the texture on the other side. And a really fast, quick way to solve that is just click on the model name, go to bevel copies and hit two. And then if I go back to bevel one, where it says bevel, I can right click and hit copy, go back to bevel two, hit paste, and it'll paste the same exact settings. You can see they're intersecting, doing all kinds of weird things. If I were to expand the edges a little bit, you can see the top issue goes away. And then if I use the Z offset and just push it back a little bit, 
You can hide that stretching material as well as the back. I'm going to go ahead and turn off that texture. So that's pretty much all there is of that. If for some reason you couldn't center your object like I did or make it the exact same as the comp size, you can use the pre-comp to make it the same size as your comp and you can also manually place this mask by just positioning it. You can double click on the mask, either just grab the whole thing or use the arrows on the keyboard to move it around. I'll show you the original comp real quick if you just want to see some of the settings. Uh, if I go into my element settings, you can see I have this second bevel that has just a uh, texture from the Pro Presets pack. And uh, also on the main face, what I did was, if I click on this material and go down, I have that in the custom layer. And then in the specular, I have just this grungy texture. And in the normal map, I also have a normal of that same grungy texture. It just adds a little bit of variation to the map. It's very subtle, but if you look in the animation, you can kind of see right there the the light affecting it a little bit. I have a couple different lights set up. These are the parallel lights, so if you just sort of point them sideways, and then this one's sort of pointing down and sideways, they give really nice highlights on the side of models. And just one point light to give it a little bit of fill. And if you're wondering at all about this little bit of shading, it's just a plane. I'll go back to my element scene setup. It's just this plane setup. If I go to material, if I turn this off real quick, it's just regular plane from the primitives folder in the model browser. And if I go ahead and hit OK right now, You'll see that the plane is just right there. And I have ambient occlusion turned on, so that gives the little bit of shading at the bottom. But if I go back and go to the bottom and turn on matte shadow, it'll basically make the plane invisible, but it'll make the ambient occlusion render on top of it. All right, so that basically brings this tutorial to a close. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know, and uh, I can do my best to try to answer them. I've been wanting to do this tutorial for a while just because it's a simple process and it's a button that's right there, but I don't know how many people actually use it, so hopefully it helps out a bit. By the way, it's been a while since my last tutorial and I can see that the subscriber count went up a little bit. And uh, thanks for watching, thanks for checking it out. I know a good amount of them though came from the LEGO video, so if you came from the LEGO video, there's, I don't think there's any way you made it this far into the video, but if you did, cool. Uh, I doubt it though. Maybe I'll make another one soon, I don't know. But again, thank you for watching this tutorial, and if you have any questions, just leave them below and I can try to answer them. My name is Dustin Hudson, and I'll see you next time.